On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent and write. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful Tuesday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the Diaspora. So, please, like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So the first thing that we are going to talk about in the morning yeah. This is not on the spot news media's usual type of news but when we see a continuous reoccurrence of these type of issues we definitely have to address them and plea to you the regular members of Chan Public for do better on our roadways. I want to look on the Pro Box taxi in the glean of this man in the headline. I tell you my peeps, four people end up lose them three pints in other accident you know and injuring two russian foreign nationals also the man them need to go easy upon the road this is a pro box you know, my peeps literally convert to a convertible yeah man the thing rough out of john shop there and each and every single day missing news reports like this where a lot of fatal accidents keeps happening the man them need to take it easy upon the road for years we are balling at jamaica so we have deplorable road conditions and all these things and we see both successive governments over the years try them utmost best to give us decent roads somewhat in certain areas certain parts but regardless we can't take advantage of the situation and end up in a body bag on a need figure easy on the road yeah man but anyway make we get into this morning's set of stories in yesterday morning's vlog i covered the knockings and clappings that claimed the life of two security guards on a china harbor engineering company complex that is off mandela highway in the plantation heights area now two security guards end up losing them three pints in that brutal and grisly attack and a third security guard was missing now this morning on the spot news media is pleased to say that that security guard was found alive and well even though shaken up really shaken up he is still alive the police reports states that the third security guard, the one that was said to be missing in that grisly attack, turned in himself to the police yesterday and was interviewed by officers attached to the Major Investigation Division. Deputy Superintendent Coleridge Minto, head of operations of the St. Andrew South Police Division, says that the security guard is in good physical condition. Now we are going to hear from the Deputy Superintendent as he relates to that particular incident then we are going to definitely continue into that story i don't want to go too much into the details of it because as you can appreciate it's a very delicate and sensitive matter uh two jamaicans have lost their lives under tragic situations uh, security officers who are on duty we would prefer that you know the investigators conduct their full investigations and then a full statement will be released regarding this matter not only him, but even some of the other officers who turned up at the location, fellow co-workers, very traumatized. Many of them have expressed not only shock, but grief. And no doubt will need some amount of counseling. He was in also a state of, of, of trauma and very shocked and also, you know, very concerned. But again, happy he's alive. He's still able to give an account and that is being done at the moment so the two security guards that had lost their lives in that brutal and grisly attack 
has since been identified by the police as Lincoln Royal and Brandon Small. Now, on the spot news media has been gathering some intelligence into that brutal knockings and clappings that has raised eyebrows. I got some damning information that I will bring to you in subsequent newscast. But you don't know all the things that we got to do due diligence and make sure we say we get it right before we present that to you, the regular members of Chan Public and members of the diaspora. So in investigations into that knockings and clappings is definitely continuing and i would suggest to the police officers that that third officer that turned in himself to you should be thoroughly questioned and you will definitely see why when i present this matter to you in subsequent newscast but anyway make we move on over there in a section of ligony in saint andrew Paying particular attention to Matilda's corner, a man who was accused of damaging several cars in the Sandy Bay community of St. Andrew, had to seek refuge at the Matilda's corner police station as he tried to escape an angry mob on Monday. No reports reaching on the spot news media is that minutes after escaping that angry mob, the man again found himself in trouble with the law as he allegedly stole a police uniform and was attempting to leave the police station dressed as an officer. Now we have a video that has been circulating and making rounds on social media to show you. Yeah man, may I tell you. Sources states that he nearly got away but was later nabbed as his actions and his appearance drew suspicion of an alert policeman who managed to apprehend the accused. So according to residents, the man went to the Sandy Park community where he reportedly damaged 12 cars. A group of men reportedly saw what was happening and tried to apprehend him. Hence the chase and he ran onto the Matilda's corner police station. Now we are going to play the video phone my peeps. Boy, may I tell you, the man is serious. This brother is definitely a clean clothes madman. Yeah, man. As you heard for yourself, my peeps, the police now believe that this brother is a man of unsound mind. As you could have heard him making utterances, making reference to the Donnelly Donaldson matter. <laughs> yeah, man, may I tell you. Now, over there in the St. Mary Police Division, a police constable has been hospitalized in serious condition after he was injured in a hit and run incident yesterday in Port Maria, St. Mary. Now, it is reported that about 10 o'clock, members of a special team were in search of a red Toyota Yaris motor vehicle suspected of being transporting drugs and guns in the parish. The vehicle was spotted along the main road in Grandstone and the driver was signaled to stop by the constable. The driver reportedly disobeyed the signal and hit the policeman who sustained multiple fractures and of course the old dirty criminal them escape. No, my peeps, you know, see why sometimes the police constables or officers, I should have said, react in a certain way. And when they react in a certain way, no, in the come comes, breathe down their necks for defending their lives. Now, I bet you if that policeman had seen that the driver would not stop and would have hit him and pulled his fireman and fire several shots in that vehicle, the headline story would be something totally different this morning. But I implore to all the good, and note the word, good police officers out there performing your duties in the most responsible and professional way seek to protect your lives by what 
ever means necessary because self-preservation is first if you cannot preserve your own life you are of no use to us the regular members of john public and we need you on our streets so just a few days ago i covered a story about the recent indicom report that outlines police fatal knockings and clappings over a 12-year period from 2010 to 2022. Now security consultant Robert Finzi Smith and psychologist Dr. Lerkim Somaj has weighed in on that Indicom reports and they had this to say which definitely makes sense. Listen. You have a greater problem if the pool was spread wider because it would mean that the general attitude of the force would be following what the Minister of National Security had technically told them some time ago, shoot to kill. If you have a small group, has it ever occurred that there are specialist teams within the force that encounter these type of confrontations more often than other people? And they would be the ones at the sharp end of the stick, so to speak. You have a number of police officers who are very hesitant to open fire on anybody because of the legal complications and consequences that occur even if you simply execute your duty. The lawyer fee, the indictment, the loss of pay while you wait to be cleared. So it's a, it is a very interesting situation because if someone attacks you with intent and you retreat, you have now given up ground that you'll probably never get back. On the other hand, if you return fire and do so accurately and do so often, you're now regarded as an executioner. We keep keeping our police force basket to carry water and then accusing them of spilling. In any data set, you will have some outliers, you'll have some people who it happens to more than others because of the circumstances they are in because of their efficiency, because l let's face it, if you, are a, it, if you are a good shot, it means that many times when confronted and you have to return fire, it will be more effective than others. But if the investigation as carried by Indicom indicate that per the person, no charges were brought against this individual because they were within the lawful context of carrying out their duty, it's unfortunate for us to want to know but why did it happen to you so often? Why did it happen to you so often? Because they are it's probably one of the hardest jobs in Jamaica to make these kind of split-second decisions of life or death. And oftentimes, every time you go out, it's your life that's on the, on the line. So the arguments tabled by Finzi Smith, that's the security consultant, and Dr. Lekim Samaj is basically the same set of arguments that On The Spot News Media outlined for you a few days ago. Now Indicom labelled 14 policemen as being on a killer radar, which is absolutely wrong for them to do because no indictment or charges was brought against these police officers labeled now they paid special attention to two particular police officers that they made reference to as cop a and cop b on your screen right now so the fatal knockings and clappings they gave a breakdown of cop a and cop b so cop a from 2010 to 2022 you can clearly see the amount of fatal knockings and clappings on your screen cop b same thing now indicom in another press release states that the independent commission of investigations indicom has indicated that none of the 14 officers flagged on the killer radar in 112 fatal knockings and clappings between 2010 and june 2021 has faced any form of prosecution so i would really want to know what was the big halabaloo for? What kind of signal in the coma try to send to the police and also to the regular members of John Public as Jamaica and Jamaicans continues to feel the hands of these criminal elements who are indiscriminate in their firing and of course barbaric 
in their series of loss of lives being meted out onto the regular members of John Public. My peeps, don't be fooled and don't be caught up in some of these type of utterances. We as the law-abiding citizens of Jamaica must stand together side by side with the decent law-abiding police officers who act within the confines of the law. And I say that without any apology. Yeah man, I'm pretty sure that many would disagree with on the spot news media. But on the spot news media stands by his words. But anyway my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to on the spot news media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. On the spot news media. Yeah man.